in thinking about this topic, in, uh, and, and you know, as I often do, I, I have stuff that I've worked on for campus <coughs> ministry, so I try to rework it a little bit for this group. Um, in thinking about the issues of interpretation and biblical interpretation, uh, we could spend a long time on this. There's lots of different areas that we could cover, and that probably comes as no shock to the people in this room that we could spend a lot of time on any given topic, right? And, and so I picked out a few things to talk about, and we'll see how far we get this week. I am on schedule to continue next week, so we'll see where we go and how we divide it between the two. If we finish this, I'll find a few more things that we can discuss next week. Um, but I'm not, I'm not depending on that by any stretch. So, part of the idea of, of why we discuss this, why we talk about this, there are the, the questions listed in the italics at the very top that, that people kind of ask. Well, why are there so different denominations? Uh, so many different Christian churches or church body. Why do Christians sometimes disagree about what the Bible says? Uh, or about what they should do in some particular situation? Uh, you'll hear, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe that. Or I don't think that we should react that way. Uh, is the Bible too hard to understand? That's another question that we'll kind of touch on in our study uh, beginning today. So get you thinking about it a little. Somebody says to you, you're telling them, this is what the Bible says. I read this this morning. My pastor said this uh, in church yesterday. And they say, well, that's your interpretation. What do they mean? All right. That it kind of sounds that way, right? I have a different interpretation. What else does that phrase suggest? Take your wrong. Okay, take your pick. Uh, we've got at least a couple of choices on the table now. Pick and pick and choose. Uh, maybe interpretation sounds to them like opinion. That's that's your. Opinion. That's what. That's what you think about this. And and clearly, the implication is always, I know better, or I or I have a different opinion. Uh, what does that suggest about what they're saying about the Bible? That it's open to interpretation. Okay. Sometimes it's very much that way. Like the Bible means whatever it means. To you, right? Right? Oh, that's, that gets to be some dangerous ground. Right? Very dangerous. Um, sometimes, yeah, it's that idea of, of however you take it, whatever you think, the Bible just is, is supposed to give you meaning somehow. It doesn't have to be a particular meaning, as long as it's some sort of meaning. Right? Uh, so it's either that, well, it can be any or all of these things, or the last question, we just don't know. It could be this, it could be that, it could be something else, right? Did you have something else? Go ahead. That it doesn't really necessarily mean what it says. You, you read it and you think it might mean this or that, but that there's no... It, I mean, we believe the Bible means what it says, that it's not really open to interpretation. We try to understand. Yeah. We pick and choose and take this. And, well, we know creation didn't ex happen exactly like that, you know, because science is pretty yeah. bad. You yeah. know, God had a hand in somehow. So she said something very important. I'm going to repeat it. Uh, the Bible means what it says. Right? You kind of have to, you have to start with that reference point with that concept if we're going to really have any sort of discussion about, well, what are the implications of that? How does that apply to my life? How do I deal with that? What do I do with that? At some point, we've got to say, well, the Bible actually means what it says. Um, you, you brought up a little bit the idea of creation. Creation is one area. 
where we find a, a pretty wide latitude in the ways that people who call themselves Christians uh, react, discuss, uh, think about these issues. I collected just a couple passages. It looks like I grabbed four uh, passages that talk about this. Uh, one is Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, Genesis 1, a couple verses later, verses 3 to 5, and God said, let there be light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. I skipped a bit after that. We could have a similar passage for each of the next five days as well. Uh, but I jumped ahead to Genesis 1, 31 and into uh, chapter 2. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work he was doing, he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. We'll keep going, take Exodus and Hebrews. Um, I'll just point you at the top of the next page. The, the first question is, what does the Bible say about God's work of creating the world? So there's lots of different points that we could mention. We've gone through many of them in those first few passages already, so just kind of have that in the back of your mind, that that's what we're going to start into. Exodus 20. Do you know what Exodus 20 is, by the way? Ten Commandments. Very good. Very good. So remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. I think that was the last time I was in here we were talking about the Ten Commandments. This is Third Commandment, according to the Lutheran and Roman Catholic numbering of the commandments. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor your daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, your animals, your, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And finally Hebrews 11 Verse 3, Hebrews 11 is a special chapter in the Bible as well. Hebrews 11 is the, the by faith chapter. Sometimes you hear it called like the hall of faith, like the hall of fame, right? Because it talks about individuals whom God used by their, or, or through their faith to accomplish uh, things. And it starts out with, I mean, it, it has a couple verses before that, but it says here as well, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. All right, pick up some important points, important themes, important things that God teaches us about the creation of the world. Who wants to start now? Us. Time began. All right, in the beginning. This, this was the beginning. Before this, there's God who is eternal, uh, so he doesn't depend on time in the way that we do or, or the way that we think about it. What else? Please. Well, so what is seen was not made of what was visible. Yeah. He did it. He God created everything that we see. Right. Uh, there's, a, there's a Latin phrase, ex nihilo, out of nothing. 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 Until? Go ahead, Jeffrey. A description of all that was done. Okay. God, God tells us. He describes the, the order, if you will, uh, the way that he went about it. Something else? Define what he means by faith. Yeah, we want to recognize that, right? It's not just a day. It's evening and morning. And then it's still not just the day, it's the first day, and the second day, and the sixth day. Yeah, right? That's, that's pretty clear. It's very clear that God 
made it. It didn't just happen. There wasn't a big boom. God it says God did it. God did it. God created. We, somebody can tell me a little bit more about that. How did God do it? What, what did he use? You got it? This is what you're saying? His word, right? God said, let there be light. And there was light. Right? And that's, that's helpful to realize because we look ahead to first chapter of John, right? In the beginning was the word. Right? That, that Jesus... The second person of the Trinity, active in the creation of the world. What else do we notice? We talked about days a little bit. Let's talk about those one more time. How many? Six days. On the seventh day, God rested. All right. Um. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That that there was there was rhyme and reason. Um, we we skipped over a bunch of the days. Do you, do you know if I if I gave you a quiz and said one to six, what was what happened on each day? Could you do it for me? I'll give you my hint. All right, my hint. It was pointed out to me about this idea of of order, how things were very uh, neat and tidy. If you, if you match up days 1, 2, and 3, they correspond to days 4, 5, and 6. Alright? So day 1 is God created the light. Day 4, the one that matches up? Sun, moon, stars. Alright? Day 2, God makes the sky and expands between the waters above and the waters below. Day five, God makes the fish in the waters below and the birds who fly in the expanse of the sky. Haven't heard this before, huh? Oh, I get to share something new with you. Day three, God, the, the dry ground appears. God gathers the water so that the, the dry ground appears. Day six, Animals that live on the land, right? And including human beings, the, the crown of his creation, right? So you can see how God had, a, had an order of thoughtfulness to this. And, and we, is it 1 Corinthians? God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace, right? That, that God has an appreciation for it. Orderliness. So, so he was. He was setting up for us this this example of orderliness. He was beginning the idea of of work for a time and take a little break to rest and replenish. Not that God needed to rest and replenish, right? <laughs> but we do. We do. I saw another hand over here, and then I'll come back here. I know it's not um, listed in the Bible where, but what do we typically think is the day that um, angels were created? That's a fine question as well. Um, and you're right, based on what the Bible tells us, we figure that the angels have to be created in the six days of creation because that's when everything was created and they're created beings. Um, the Bible doesn't tell us, so we don't really uh, tend to speculate. At times, people have. Um, there, I, I've heard that uh, some like to say first day makes sense. God created the light and he created these, these beings of light, if you will. Um, but there, are, you could come up with as many uh, as many guesses as there are days, you know, if you if you really want to. So uh, beyond that, yeah, we, we can't really can't really pin it down. Please. I know we haven't touched on Sabbath yet. Uh, am I ahead of the game? No, go ahead. Touch on Sabbath. What do you want to say about it? Okay. <laughs> Some people think that we need to Sabbath <laughs> is the day of worship. Right. And rest. Right. Mm -hmm. And they think it's a Saturday. Mm hmm We don't have to think that way, do we? No, we don't. We don't have to think that way. Uh, again, this goes back a little bit to, we, we talked Ten Commandments, uh, boy, I don't remember exactly, but I guess that was the beginning of December that I popped in here, right? Um, God, God teaches in the, in the sweep of Scripture, right? We've got Old Testament where the Ten Commandments fall. And New Testament, things, things change pretty drastically. 
Because we stop looking ahead and when is the Messiah coming, and we start looking back and say, there he is, he came, remember that, remember the things that he's done. Uh, or Colossians puts it, the things that we were doing in the past were a shadow of the things to come, but the reality is found in Christ. And specifically, that very passage that talks about shadows says, one of those shadows is the Sabbath day. Right? So we, so we know that, that the specific command of do no work on the Sabbath day uh, at the, the punishment of being stoned to death, that's out the window. Right? Uh, and, and so we, we look at what the New Testament says. We, we, still, we still use that commandment to remind us of the importance of worship, the importance of being in God's Word, of, of uh, regarding it as holy and all of these uh, factors. Uh, but, yeah, the idea of there has to be one particular day, that, that's really gone out the window. Uh, we say in the New Testament, God's given us some clear uh, principles for worship. Do things in an orderly way. Uh, do things in a loving way. Do things that build each other up using the word and the sacraments, the tools that God gives us to build each other up, right? Uh, and so we, we take all those things and, and, and kind of the extension of your question is some people say, well, isn't Sunday the Sabbath day now? Nope, nope. People decided on Sunday, right? They had a good reason. They said Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday. Let's keep celebrating that because that's a pretty important thing, which we'll talk about in this study. Uh, that's a pretty important thing, uh, and so they did. They did, and so we've kind of settled on Sunday, but it doesn't have to be Sunday, right? Um, and so yeah, we have to to recognize that the the specific wording of the Ten Commandments were really for the Old Testament Israelites. It's the same reason that we don't avoid pork. Did anybody have ham on Christmas? Right. <laughs> right. We, there's, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I sometimes wore clothes that have different fabrics put together too. You know, you couldn't do that before, right? So follow up on that. That, that yeah. argument comes back. I have sort of debated that, but not as well as you, obviously. And the argument comes back that Jesus celebrated the Sabbath. He kept the law for us. Yeah, it, there's there's a number of it, it is an interesting discussion to look at at Jesus and his disciples and the relationship to the Sabbath. Um, they they went along and picked some grain, uh -huh. and everybody said, "Whoa, you can't do that!" And Jesus said, um, "I'm the Lord of the Sabbath, right? I get to I get to kind of decide what the details of this uh, this rule is." Um, there was another time, Jesus told the man. Pick up your mat. That's right. Walk. walk. And the enemies all said, He told you to pick up your mat and walk? Did it not realize that it's a Sabbath day? Uh, and yeah, Jesus wasn't terribly concerned about that, right? Um, and, and again, when, when we first talked about God, God set this up. Have days of work and a day of rest, and specifically the Sabbath, and the Sabbath rest, for lots of important reasons, including the fact that if people don't take a little rest, they're going to work themselves to death. Right? That's an important thing for people. And, and, and God wanted that for people. He wanted Sabbath to be a blessing for people. Now, it, it's true that that meant that they had to avoid certain things. They had to be careful about that. That This, this was still a law, and it was punishable by death. Uh, but it wasn't designed to be, this is, this is a, a horrible, horrible burden, right, for, for people to deal with, either. It was, it was meant for them. Uh, Jesus says that too, right? Mm -hmm. Sabbath was made for man, not man made the Sabbath. for the Sabbath. <coughs> right. Jeffrey, something else to... <coughs> what... No, what I'm saying is, is that there is no specific day now that we have to follow as a Sabbath day, right? That instead, 
we look back on the commandment and say, this is a very good reminder for us that we still should worship God, uh, and we should still set aside time to do that. We should still make that a priority in our lives. Uh, but it, it's changed from being, do no work, and this is the particular day. Right? It's changed from that. Um, we, use it, we use it to remind us of what God says about His Word and about how we worship Him. No, not at all. Like I said, it's, it's not an, an issue anymore where you can't work on that day. Um, if it were, right, if we say, hey, Sunday is the modern day Sabbath, then who's all breaking the law that, you know, there are police officers working, and, uh, you know, uh, firefighters, nurses, and, and, you know, pastor, there's any number of people that work on on Sundays, and, and we're not going to jump down on them and say, no, you can't do that, right? Pastor Clements has something to add. Uh, in connection with this, I'm, I'm always just uh, flabbergasted when I open up Luther and I see how he explains it so clearly. His meaning of the third commandment has nothing to do with the day. Yeah. <laughs> he just says, uh, we should fear not God, we do not despise preaching, preaching. his words. Oh, that's safe for you to learn it, or however you're saying it. <laughs> but uh, he doesn't mention anything about it. Yeah. It's the word, it's and it's worship. Word and worship, exactly. Yes? This is not a fault-finding comment, but also in creation, God revealed himself as the Trinity. Yes. Uh, so that we can understand that concept as it's used throughout the Bible. Yeah, I, I ran across, um, not terribly long ago, again, not, it wasn't brand new to me, um, but just the idea of how, how <coughs> many doctrines and how many teachings are packed into the book of Genesis, and really in the first three chapters of Genesis, uh, it's very hard to find anything that isn't at least referenced there that, I mean, it's expounded on, it's described, it's explained in many ways throughout the rest of the Bible. And, and so, yeah, even, even Old Testament Jews understood this concept of the Trinity. When Jesus came and said he was the Son of God, the Jews got upset because he was calling himself the Son of God. Calling himself God. That's what they were upset with. They didn't say, God doesn't have a son. That's ridiculous, right? No, they, they understood from Old Testament, yeah, exactly what you said, that, that God had, had taught them this already. Um, and so, yes, I, I, we did mention that the second person of the Trinity, active in creation, the, the third person as well. We, we do, again, for our, our uh, you know, uh, confession of faith, like the Apostles' Creed, first article, second article, third article, right? The Father created the world. Well, that's true. And, and we give them, like, the primary uh, spot when we talk about that. But God created the world. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Because you can't separate the Trinity out. And this, this is delving deep, right? You, you can't really talk about this without starting to talk in circles and go back to Athanasian Creed and say, but there aren't three gods, there's only one God, right? The, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's, that's one God. Um, and so, yes, that... that Everything that God does in uh, it, to to the outside, it's God doing. And so you could say any person of the Trinity is involved. And, and so creation, absolutely, we see it very clearly. The Word, the Spirit was hovering over the waters. Something that well, it's kind of like the way I feel that you have to accept the very first sentence. <laughs> or you can't accept any of the rest of it. Yeah. One part, you pick and choose, you do everything. God created the heavens and the earth. He said he did it, and everything follows. And he's awesome, and you need to recognize yeah. that. Yeah. He can do all things. <clears throat> and he does. <coughs> you don't, if you don't believe in that first sentence, you're kind of shocked. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it, it, that, that's the reason that God starts that way, right? Is, is this is his starting point. In the beginning, God. God created. So the next question I have is, is we've talked about the, the proper interpretation. What does the Bible say about these things? What other interpretations are out there? 
that the day and night was not the 24 hours oh. we have today. It was actually millions of years. Well, wait a second. Doesn't the Bible also say, with God a thousand years are like a day, and a day is like a thousand years? Does the Bible say that? Yes. Is it talking about creation? No. No, not at all, right? And, and so, now is it so clearly we can say every day is millions of years of, why do we say this, evolution taking place, right? What are, tell me at least one problem with this. You could probably come up with, I bet we could come up with four or five at least. Do you want to give me a problem with this interpretation? Or do you have something else? Alright, hang on to it for just a second, alright? So what's the problem with saying a million years of evolution for each of the days of creation? Well, we have specific things created for each day and evolution and everything would have to come up together. Okay. And kind of tying into that maybe? Okay, that's a, that's another good one. Uh, let's evolution as scientists teach it today, right? Tell us things like there was a little primordial life form in the goo of the early earth that eventually, you know, uh, became a, a fish in the water, and then it crawled out onto the land, and then it became a dinosaur, and dinosaurs turned into birds, and this is just some of the things that are actually taught, right? But that's not the order that God presents it in. God doesn't say, well, you know, just like you guys are looking at the different uh, rock layers and finding all these things, so I'll give you one day, two day, three day, you know. That's not, they, they don't fit together. Uh, Brian pointed out, evolution requires that things are dying away because the whole, the whole mechanism of evolution is survival of the fittest. The things that are best adapted and have the new and fancy equipment, they live longer and have more offspring, and therefore we make progress. Everything else has to die away to give them the space to make that progress. Well, God says, the day that you sin, you will die, right? That, that it's not until Adam and Eve fall into sin that death is part of the world. Right? So, so we're, if we're going to try to shoehorn these things together, something has to give. And unfortunately, what always gives is what Scripture says. All right? Okay, yeah, very much along those lines. Um, so if we're recognizing that God is, in fact, all-powerful, um, if we're to sort of take an evolutionary standpoint, we're saying that things, um, you know, change of their own accord without his involvement. His power over them. Um, and so that sort of begs the question, if God saw all that he had made and it was good, why, why would he not just create it the way that it would have quote unquote evolved? Yeah, yeah, why did he need, right? And, and here's, the, here's the funny thing about it, right? I look at this and say, God created the entire world in six days just by the power of his word. I say, that's amazing. That says something amazing about a super powerful God. And, and one of the arguments that's launched against this is, well, God could have created things to evolve. And, and isn't that even cooler about God, that he made things with this capacity to evolve? And I, I don't know if that's cooler or tougher or, or what, right? Because it kind of, kind of tries to bridge the same idea. God just decided that he wanted to do it this way. Um, and, and, and that's the, the struggle with it, is I say, if we really want to acknowledge that God is powerful and wonderful, why don't we just take him at his word, instead of deciding what would make him more impressive to me? But that makes right. us so dumb to believe that, you know. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's a challenging thing. Uh, because, yeah, there's a lot kidding. of very wise <laughs> people that, you know, that, that come up with this. Something else? Well, you run into the problem, too, if you say, well, God 
I didn't really mean a day. He says a day, but he didn't really mean it. Yeah. Then where do you draw the line? I mean, you could say that by repeating the Bible. Well, God says this, but he doesn't really mean that you're going to go to hell. Well, and that's, that's part of the problem, right? Yeah. Is, is where do we draw the line of what we get to pick and choose and what we get to decide, no, that doesn't make sense to me or that does make sense to me. And the answer is we don't. We just listen to what the Bible says. Um, give, me, give me a reason from the Bible why we don't take the days to mean an inordinately long amount of time. Well, in Exodus it says, in six days, for six days you will work. It doesn't say for six million years you will work and then you get a day off. Yeah. And, and there's a few of those things, right? Right? If God created the world in six super long periods of time, why then would he say, and so in six days you work, and then you take a day off, and then you work another six days? He'd have to say work for a super, super long time and hope you're one of the lucky ones that happens to be around on that seventh millions of years when you get to rest, right? Or, and there was evening, there was morning. God, God establishes periods, this is where you were going, huh? Light and darkness. Was there half a million years of light followed by half a million years of darkness? They don't, they don't fit together. They don't fit together. And, and people try, try very hard to say, I'm a Christian, but I also believe in evolution because there are lots of smart scientists in the world telling me this. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit together. Um, there are a couple other versions of, you know, interpretations like this, but they basically boil down to the same sorts of things. It's either trying to fit evolution and what science tells us right now, because remember, science changes pretty much constantly right? as we make new discoveries and find new things. Um, trying to take that and match it up with what the Bible says. And it just doesn't work. We've also hit on third, um, top, third question here a bit already. Why is this an important issue? Because somebody might say to you, I'm, I'm not saved because I believe that God created the world in six days. I'm saved because I believe that Jesus is my Savior. Are they right? As far as it goes, right? But what's the problem? Or problems? If you're discounting one part of the Bible, how can you say that this part is? is you can choose, right? I go to the buffet. If I decide that I don't want the sweet potatoes today, um, I don't take the sweet potatoes. I stick with the other stuff, right? The Bible's not a buffet, right? It's not pick and choose what I feel like and what I want. It, the Bible fits together in and of itself, right? It's when we start straining to add these other issues into it that it becomes a problem for us. <laughs> And you get into, I mean, you get right down into the issue of atonement and justification and salvation. Because, do you remember, Jesus is called the second Adam. Just as by one man and his sin, all mankind fell into sin. So there's one man who by his righteousness makes all... Don't have that one man. Most apart, right? Really, the Bible does hang on this. Now, we 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 do we do acknowledge there are people, and there can be people who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior from sin. They are true Christians, members of the Holy Christian Church, the Invisible Church, who also believe in evolution. But there's there's a term for that, and we call it a happy inconsistency. Because it's an inconsistency. It, it doesn't fit together to believe one and not the other. But God allows them to believe the one even though there is... And, and that's true about any false teaching. That's true about any false... There, there's no false teaching outside of that which destroys salvation. Right? Uh, that, that is in and of itself... It rules out the possibility of saving faith. 
but we make a big deal about standing up against any false teaching because you and I don't know when that false teaching grows into more or where it becomes a lack of faith and where it becomes unbelief. So this is not an unimportant matter. If you're willing to give this up, it's been alluded to and maybe even said already, if you're willing to give this up, what else are you willing to give up? Right? The, the way we look at Genesis in the first few chapters really sets the tone for how we look at the entire Bible. There's, there's very good reason to spend time thinking about this is what God says about this man. It really does set up the, the, the rest of the, uh, the accounts of Scripture for us. Let's go on to miracles. Is that all right? John 2. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw out, draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. This was a wedding banquet, remember? Mm -hmm. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned to wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and the cheaper wine after the gifts. Guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. Thus, he thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. Oh, uh, you've got another one, John 11. This is uh, uh, Lazarus. Mary and Martha, remember them? Their brother Lazarus. Jesus finds him, or comes, and, and he's already dead. He's in the tomb. Uh, 43. Jesus calls out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! You ever try that with a dead person? <laughs> come on out! It's a little cold today, but it'll be all right. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face, and Jesus said to him, take off the grave clothes and let him go. John 20. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Define a miracle for me. Jeffrey? Something abnormal that's decent? Violate the laws of nature as we understand them. Yeah, something, something that... That's not just abnormal, but impossible. Something that goes against everything that we know about the world around us. This is where scientists can be kind of helpful, right? Uh, they, they can watch water for a long, 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 long time, and it's going to stay water. It's never going to turn into wine. Except once. When Jesus decided that that water that he had created should be wine instead. And so it was. Right? And it was the best. The best wine that the master had probably ever tasted. Right? Uh, yeah, a, a miracle is when God determines to do something contrary to the laws that he's established in this world. If we rely on these things, right? We rely on the fact that if I... Uh, if I jump up, I always come down. Hopefully. <laughs> right? Right? I, I, we live our lives that way. That, uh, you know, fire hurts. It always hurts if we stick our hand in it. Right? Uh, and, and so, there, there's a consistency to our world that God has made that way for us. But sometimes God decided it should be a little different. What did Jesus' miracles demonstrate? He is God. That he's God. That he has God's power. That he's with us. That yeah. And and of course we can point to other instances where God allows people to do miracles, his prophets, his apostles. Right? In his name. And what do they do? They affirm the word of God that they're sharing. 
another another you know demonstration. What do the miracles do? They they tell us that Jesus is 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 being true to his word. Uh, is is saying it like it is. Some people claim these miracles didn't happen. Why do they do that? Might be scary. Okay? Might be scary. What else? Why do people say miracles going back to the beginning and not believing? Okay. Just because they don't believe? It doesn't seem DJ? Because miracles don't happen. Right? That's 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 the argument. No, 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 no. Jesus couldn't have turned water into wine because nobody can turn water into wine. Well, we agree. Nobody can turn water into wine. That's why it was so amazing when Jesus did it. Uh, nobody can calm a storm. That's true. That's why it was so incredible when Jesus stood up and told the winds and waves, just shut up. That's enough. And they listened. Nobody can walk on water out to the boat. But Jesus did. And, and, and go on and on and on, right? Impossible. Yes, that's why we call them miracles. That's why we needed a name for them. These are impossible things that happen. They're still impossible. Yes. This is kind of a dumb aside, but I heard last week where the Pope confirmed that Mother Teresa, in fact, did her second miracle, so she's going to be a saint. I saw something about that too. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, uh, so I know I know probably nothing more than what you just mentioned. That there was something, uh, yeah, um, and that gets us into a whole different category, right? Um, a, a whole different issue. That's not. It's not specific to to this issue. Um, it definitely touches on interpretation, right? Because it brings a lot of extra biblical material into our method of theology, the way that we understand what God is doing in our lives and so on. Um, but, yeah, yeah, miracles. And, 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 and really, in my mind, what that does is it cheapens the, the fact of real miracles, right? The, the reason miracles are so amazing is because they are impossible and they don't happen every day. And not just anybody can do them. And, and we don't need miracles from Mother Teresa to say she was good that she helped the poor or things like that. We can say one without needing the other. Right? Absolutely. Um, yeah? Can tell the Pope that we Christians are all saints? We could, we could, yeah, yeah. Our understanding of saints says, right, God has made us holy. Yeah. We are already saints, and, and will continue to be into eternity. All right, we got about two minutes. Miracles are impossible, and they don't make sense. Right? It's irrational. In other words, I get to decide from the Bible what makes sense and what doesn't. What is rational and what isn't. Well, that couldn't have happened, therefore I discount that. How, then, do they explain a passage that says Jesus walked on water, or turned water into wine, or fed 5,000 men plus women and children with a couple loaves and fish? They don't believe the Bible. Okay, they don't believe it. They, they do have an answer. Have you ever run across this? They say it's just made up by men. Okay, that, that's part of it, right? Just, just made up. And if you if you kind of drill down a little bit, right, they say, well, we can pick out some of the things that Jesus said. Because they like some of the things that Jesus said. You should just love people. You should be forgiving and caring, right? Did Jesus say things like that? Of course he did. That, that's the real message of Jesus. So his disciples later said, you know, Jesus was such a great guy. We really want to remember him and we want other people to remember him. And then they start telling fish stories, right? You know what a fish story is, right? You catch a fish that's about this big, and a week later it's this big, and a year later, you know, you got pictures to prove it was this big. And, and so that's how it went. The legends grew about Jesus. And all of a sudden, he wasn't just a man who taught some really neat things. Now, he was God himself, right? And so you explain this away, but here's the problem. In a, in a society and a people who, who say that they depend on evidence, 
There's zero evidence that these things grew and changed over time. The evidence is people wrote things down who were contemporaries to Jesus, and this is what they wrote. And the only reason people say, no, that's not the case, is because they don't like it. Or they don't believe it, or they don't think it makes sense up here. All right, we'll pick it up there next week. <coughs>